If you've been around Sportsters for any amount of time, you'll know a couple of things about them. First off, the fact that they're built on Harley's Evolution platform means that they're almost bulletproof, and second, nearly all of them have clutch problems. Usually starts around 15,000 miles, and that's true for this one. So we're going to install the Barrett Extra Plate Clutch Kit, as well as the Barrett High Performance Clutch Spring. Now, like any wet clutch, Harley's stock setup uses a set of rings. In the middle of these rings is a spring plate held together by brass rivets. These brass rivets often break, causing havoc inside the primary. That's how the spring plate earned the nickname, the grenade ring. In my case, the bike would no longer go into neutral, and even when the clutch was fully pulled in, the bike still wanted to move forward in the friction zone. As you can see, I've already removed the primary cover on this 07 Sportster. There are loads of videos and tutorials about how to do this, so I don't want to waste your time by showing you all the steps, but we'll quickly go over how we got to this point. First, we need to take all the tension out of the clutch cable, so let's go ahead and slide this boot up out of the way. Then we're going to grab the nut and loosen it, and then turn the adjustment screw all the way counterclockwise. Our next step is to drain the primary fluid, so go ahead and do that, and it's also a good time to loosen the tension on the chain tensioner. Next, we need to move these forward controls. Now, if you have mid controls, you're gonna have to remove them completely because they're going to be attached through the primary housing. However, because I have forward controls on this bike, all we have to do is get rid of that top bolt. And once that top bolt is out, we can then loosen the bottom bolt, which will then allow us to rotate those forward controls out of our way. Our next step is to remove this shifting mechanism from the spline, and it's just a standard hex nut. Then once you back that out, you can probably just wiggle that right off. If it's rusted in place, like you can see this one is, then you may want to actually take that hex key and stick it back in the hole to give you a little bit of leverage, and it should pop right out. Once it's out of your way, just give it a good brush in with a wire brush, and it shouldn't be a problem next time. Now it's time to remove the derby cover or the clutch inspection cover. And you'll notice that I actually still have the clutch cable in place here. Now, the reason that I'm choosing to do that is because I can take off this entire primary cover and just set it over to the side. I don't actually have to remove that cable from the primary cover itself. Now, if you're worried about maybe damaging the cable or the fitting, and rightly so, because it's kind of a pain in the butt if you do, just go ahead and unscrew it. It's a fairly easy process and set it out of your way. With the cover removed, we can then remove the hex lock plate and spring. This will expose the threaded stud of the adjusting screw assembly with the blade slot. Using a flathead screwdriver, turn this stud clockwise to remove the nut that's attached to it. As you can see, once you get the nut out of the housing, you'll then actually have to spin the nut itself or hold it in place in order to finish removing it. You can then use your finger or a flathead screwdriver to remove the ramp assembly. The ramp assembly is attached to the clutch cable, but you should now have plenty of slack to pull it out, twist it around, and remove the clutch cable end from the assembly. Next, you're going to remove the bolts from the primary cover. Now, there is a specific order that you want to do these in. Your first bolt is always going to be this top one right here, and then your second bolt is the one caddy corner down to the right. Then you're going to follow around clockwise around the primary cover, removing each of the bolts. You probably noticed earlier that when I showed you that spring plate, I did so on top of a workbench with a completely removed clutch basket. And that's because when I removed the primary cover on this Sportster, here's what I saw. The grenade ring had certainly earned its name. So let's stop for a minute and we'll back up and I'll show you how we got to this point. Now, if you're like me and you're unlucky enough to break that clutch hub, you're going to need a couple of tools in order to get this mechanism off. The first of those is going to be an impact gun, whether that is pneumatic or electric, and then you're gonna need a couple of deep well sockets. You have a normally threaded nut on the front, but then on the rear, you do have a reverse thread. So make sure that you are set to go forward even though you're actually loosening. 
As you can see here, I use a block of wood to remove these. It works fine for removal, but when you go to retorque these back down, it is 250 foot-pounds of torque in the front and 150 foot-pounds of torque in the rear. So you're going to want either a nylon or a steel locking tool in order to make sure that those sprockets aren't going to spin. Once you have those bolts off, you can then remove your entire clutch hub and move it over to your bench. The only specialized tool that you'll need for this job is a diaphragm spring compression tool. Borrow one if you can, because this is literally the only time that you'll use it, but if you can't borrow one, they'll run about 50 or 60 bucks. Now, normally this would be inside of the motorcycle still, but well, we saw how that went. So the tool includes a stud that you thread onto the adjusting screw. You then place the compression piece over the stud. With that in place, you then take your handle on the top and spin your handle onto your stud. A wrench is going to come in handy here because it's going to allow you to hold that stud from spinning while still continuing to turn your handle. You don't have to go down really far with this. All that we really want is just enough pressure to allow us a little bit of play to release that retaining ring. Once you have the pressure that you need, come in with a set of needle nose pliers and you can grab one side of the ear of the retaining ring. And this is where you wanna be really careful because this is where I went wrong and it's where a number of others have as well. This is where you can break the ears off from that inner clutch assembly and have to either replace that or replace the entire clutch basket. Once your ring is out, you can actually just move it out of the way, set it to the side because you're going to reuse it in a moment. And then underneath that, you have a second ring. Now this isn't a retaining ring and you obviously can't take it out because it's a solid ring, but you can at least lift it out of the way. And now you can lift off the pressure plate with the spring included. Once your pressure plate's out of the way, you can then see the rest of the clutch pack in here, including all of the fibers and the steel plates. Now, fortunately, mine is on a workbench and I can just flip it over and get rid of half of them. However, you are going to have to dig those out and probably use a pick because the oil is going to cause them to stick together. And as you can see here, half of them came right out, but then the rest of them, I'm going to have to use a pick anyway. So now that we've got everything disassembled, we've got the entire old uh, clutch pack taken apart and we've got our bare hub here uh, inside of our basket. You can see that this spins really freely. Uh, there's no drag on it. It feels really nice. So we know that the bearing inside of this is good. Now it's time to put everything back together. Barnett actually has some very specific instructions for how their kit goes together because as you can see, we don't have that spring plate in here anymore, which is uh, the problem that we wanted to get rid of. So first it says install the small flat steel damper seat in the unit. So we're going to take this one and go ahead and just slide it right in there. Next, it says install the damper dished spring with the white dot facing out. And so this is our dished spring. And as you can see, I have a white dot right here. And when they say dished, as you can see here, there's a, there's a concave to it. So that white dot needs to face out. So go ahead and let that one sit in. And then the next one is the B fiber plate. So we've had our fiber plates, uh, kind of soak into here and the primary fluid for a bit and the b fiber plate looks a little bit different than all the rest of them it actually has a uh, a larger hole to it than the rest of the fiber plates so we're gonna pull it out of our fluid here and try not to make too much of a mess you don't need a ton of fluid on these basically all you're making sure is that those uh those fibers had some fluid on them so that they're not going to dry so here's our b plate and just line it up with our teeth here let it sit in Next, we have a steel drive plate, and that's these guys. And you wanna make sure here, when you, when you feel these, you can actually see how they're stamped. This side has a concave to it, 
and this side is kind of sharp. So when we put these in, we want them all kind of facing the same direction. It's just a matter of best practice. There's a lot of argument as to whether or not it makes any difference, but uh, we all know that it doesn't hurt things. So we're going to go with the rounded side toward the outside and go ahead and install that. And then we go for a friction plate. And this is just one of our regular friction plates, so no need to have to look for anything on this. And again, just let it kind of drip off a little bit to where it's not uh, going to make a mess all over your bench. And set it in place. And then you follow that same pattern all the way through. So again, we're going to look for the rounded edge and have the rounded edge toward the outside. And follow that by another friction plate. Same story on these friction plates. If you look at them, they are stamped as well, and you can kind of see uh, there's there's one side that's a little bit rounded, one side that's a little more sharp. And so I'm, again, putting all of my rounded sides to the outside. And you follow that same pattern until we get all the way to the end. Now that we've got all of our plates and all of our steels back into there, we're going to bring the hub back over and put the nut back on. Remember that is a right hand drive, so you're going to feel like you're loosening, but you're actually tightening it back in place. So now that we've got the basket back in place, we're going to reverse our process from earlier. Now in this case, I've already tightened this down and it's got enough free play in order for me to be able to get the ring into place. A pair of needle nose pliers is gonna come in handy here, though I've had good luck with flathead screwdrivers and uh, even actually used a deformed ring that I screwed up before in order to be able to wedge that ring back underneath those ears on the clutch hub. Once we have the ring in place, we come back in with our wrench once more and we can loosen the handle on the compression tool. With the handle out of the way, we can then take off the compression cage itself. Then I like to grab needle nose again here to provide just a little bit of pressure against that bearing in order to help me get the piece off of the adjustment stud. Now that we've got everything back in place, it's time to button it up and finish up the project. All you're gonna do here is just reverse the steps that you did earlier. I like to actually use one bolt inside of the primary cover just to kind of help guide where I'm pushing the primary cover into place. Remember to start at the top and then go back down to the bottom. Follow your bolt pattern around clockwise. Then make sure you've torqued them down to factory specs. Refill your primary fluid, put your derby cover back on, and you're done. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions or comments, leave them in the blog post or right here on the video. We'll see you next time.